Well, last week, the International Criminal Court dropped crimes against humanity charges against Kenyan Vice President William Ruto. Like his president before him, he denied charges that the ICC levelled against him in connection to fatal post-electoral violence that erupted in Kenya in 2007. Now, Ruto had been a member of the Orange Democratic Movement when the clashes erupted. We're joined now by Kenyan opposition leader and head of the ODM and Cord Coalition, Raila Odinga. Um, Raila, thanks very much for making the time to speak to us. Now, uh, what's your take on the ICC's inability to prosecute any of the six Kenyans that were already initially hauled before them uh, over that violence in 2007? Did you think it, they had a choice in terms of moving forward? First, you know <coughs> that I congratulated Ruto after the ruling was made. Um, but, of course, I say that uh, ICC had a choice because uh, the ICC had uh, evidence before it, which had been written by some witnesses. Now, when witnesses recanted, there is Article 68 of the ICC statute, which allows them to use recanted evidence. They, of course, refused to use recanted evidence in this particular case. And um, uh, then they come up and say that it was a mistrial. So I'm saying that the accused person, of course, must be, uh, of course, celebrating. They are happy because they were not tried, and therefore they were not found guilty. But I'm saying that uh, to the international justice, it uh, spells doom, because it basically means that uh, anybody can be accused, and if you can find a way of interfering with witnesses by intimidating witnesses, by killing witnesses, for example, then you get scot-free. So you think the ICC should have pushed harder in one way or the other? That's interesting, because where do you stand on the argument that's often put forward that the ICC uh, unfairly targets Africans when it comes to choosing which cases to pursue? I've said several times that that is hogwash. Most of the African cases before ICC were referred there by the African leadership themselves. You had uh, Taylor. He was in exile in Nigeria. He was t put on a plane from Nigeria and taken to ICC. You have the cases of, uh, case of Bemba. Again, that was because of the, uh, the complainant is, is the DRC. The General Nkunda was put on a plane by Mr. Kagame and, and, and sent to, to, to The Hague. Likewise, the Kenyan cases, the, all the Kenyan cases, we refused to set up a tribunal to try the people. We forcing Kofi Annan to send the, 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 the envelope to the ICC. In other words, it is Kenya which refused and which preferred that we, the people should be taken to the ICC. Mr. Museveni himself has uh, asked the ICC to try Mr. Coyne. One of them right now, Mr. Ongwen, is being tried uh, in, 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 in The Hague. So it is not true. But if you look at it this way, there are some other leaders from other countries who are not Africans who have been tried at the ICC. One of them, the late uh, former president of Yugoslavia, Semilesovic, he died in The Hague, charged. Uh, just the other day, Another leader from, from former Yugoslavia was also tried and sentenced to nearly 50 years of imprisonment. But, but when sometimes it's, it's difficult to establish exactly who is responsible for what and where that line should be drawn. When it, when it came to the actual disruptions that were seen, the fatal disruptions, a thousand people were killed in 2007, in part that was contributed to by followers, supporters of the ODM. It's not necessarily just people who ended up in the ICC. It, uh, it, do you feel at all responsible for the actions of your supporters? Nothing could be further from the truth. You have said it several times that ODM was never responsible for killings. People were killed in Nairobi, in slums in Madari, in, in, in uh, uh, Kibera, in Naivasha, there was a lot of killing, in Akuru, in Kakamega, in Kisumu, in, El, in, in, in Kericho. The killings they're talking about were only the killings in Eldred, which was just about 200 and something people out of over 1,300. So it is not true. Those people who were killed elsewhere were supporters of ODM 
who are being targeted by other people. And those ones have never been brought to book up to today. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to say is that it is a, a victory for other people, but not for the victims. Those who have lost as a result of this ruling by the ICC are the victims mm -hmm. of the violence in 2007, 2007. And what are your plans for the election in 2017? It, 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 there's been some infighting within the Cord coalition as to who should be you know, the, the, gaining the majority of the support from the coalition itself. Uh, do you not think it's time to step aside and let somebody else make it have a run at it? See, it is not really a, a question of infighting. This is a democracy at its best. Uh, we are a coalition. We are not one party. Even if you are one party as the ODM, there would be other people who are interested in running for the presidency. And I've always said that I don't want to impose myself on the people. Uh, I will only run if the people want me to run. Uh, and that's why we say that uh, we're going to find a way of nominating the called flag bearer without any much acrimony. But what has happened there is an exercise in democracy that somebody has got a right to show that uh, he is also interested. And, Mr. Uh, Odinga, I'm terribly sorry. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have. We wish you the very best of luck of finding a smooth way of, of uh, working out who is going to be the cord flag bearer. Raila Odinga there, the Kenyan Thank opposition you. leader and head of the cord coalition. That's it for Iron Africa. Thanks very much for joining us. Do so again if you can. Take care. The debate.